Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. We didn't have a show last week because I was sick with an ear infection. Sorry about that. And trust me, I would uh, rather have been talking about dev news instead of laying up in bed. But anyway, it's November, and uh, November is my favorite month, mostly because it's my birthday month. But I'm excited to continue to see all uh, of the fall um, foliage hit the Pacific Northwest. The leaves are just beautiful, and I miss New York City every single day, but Seattle in the fall, it's truly, truly beautiful. All right, enough about all of that. Let's get into this week's step news. First up, there was some big business news in the cloud computing space this week, huh? You've probably heard about it on CNBC and Bloomberg and whatnot. A big legacy tech company buying a huge player in the open source world. That's right, the Microsoft acquisition of GitHub is now complete. I mean, okay, th that's, that, that's the story everybody's talking about, right? Right? All right, no, first of all, in all seriousness, congratulations to IBM and Red Hat. And, and for those who didn't see the news, IBM has announced that it will be acquiring Red Hat for $34 billion. Wow. And I know that for me, Red Hat was my first real introduction to the world of Linux and open source going back like 20 years now. And yeah, I'm, I'm old. Um, and it's, it's great to see their success. And I look forward to seeing what happens next in the cloud space. But back to GitHub, because, you know, the other big open source related acquisition, the deal which was announced back in June, it closed um, last week, and GitHub is now part of Microsoft and will be headed up by the new CEO and Xamarin co-founder, Nat Friedman. And in his blog post announcing the completion of the acquisition, Nat reaffirmed that GitHub will operate independently as a community platform and business, and that the GitHub will retain its product philosophy. Now, I know that some individuals in the community are still feeling uncertain about this move, but I'm just going to reiterate what I said back in June, and again, I'm just speaking for myself, but I can't think of a better person than Nat to lead GitHub, and that's with or without Microsoft. And I have total faith that GitHub will continue to be GitHub, no matter who its corporate dad might be. But don't get it twisted. I am hoping that this means that I can score one of those uh, GitHub hoodies with my username on it. A link to Nat's blog post are in the show notes and description down below. And speaking of GitHub, they just announced Game Off, and that's their annual month-long game jam. And um, a game jam is basically like a hackathon for games. And this year, the theme is hybrid, and that can be interpreted however you want. So users from all over the world can participate either as individuals or as teams. And you have until December 1st, 2018 to submit your game. You can use it all kinds of uh, programming languages. There's lots of resources. And uh, links uh, to the announcement and sign-up page are in the description and show notes down below, so game on. And in some Windows dev news, our friend Nicola announced the next major update of the Windows Community Toolkit, now version 5.0. And this update introduces the new Windows XAML host control, which is built on top of the new XAML Islands APIs to simplify adding built-in or custom UWP control to a WPF or Windows Forms desktop application. And um, also, after hundreds of comments on GitHub and two years of discussions, the UWP tab view control is now available in the Windows Community Toolkit. So that's an awesome development. And um, there are some other new features too, including Twitter and LinkedIn, uh, .NET Framework support. So check out the show notes and description below for a link to the blog post, as well as a getting started tutorial. And speaking of Windows, in the latest Windows Insider build, there's a really great new feature, Zoom support in the Windows console. I love this. So Rich Turner shows it off in his command line blog, and it works in any console windows. So that's like WSL or PowerShell or good old CMD. And you can zoom now by holding down control and then scrolling on your trackpad or your, uh, your mouse wheel. So that's really fun. And also fun, the console now honors the light dark settings from the Windows 10 October 2018 update. So if you're all in on dark mode like me, your scroll bar will no longer look weird. On Channel 9 this week, over on the Xamarin Show, James is joined by Visual Studio for Mac PM, Jordan Matheson, to talk about all the new stuff in Visual Studio for Mac 7.6 and 7.7. .7. There are two new episodes of Five Things, one about SPAs, or single page apps, with Burke and Assam. And be sure to check that out, and also follow Asim on Twitter, because he is awesome. And uh, Burke also has a really great episode of Five Things with Suze Hinton, who you might know as Noob Cat, but I know as the girl who convinced me to import one of those like new versions of the Nokia banana phone, you know, like the, the phone from the Matrix, because I saw hers and I was jealous. Anyway, 
Suze will have you buying more gadgets too because she tells Burke all about IoT devices and what stuff you should get, so check it out. And over on the Azure YouTube channel, yes, there's a great video tip from Cecil and Michael Crump about using the Azure CLI using Mac OS. Now, all these videos are linked below in the show notes and description, and I'm going to try, but no promises, to link them in the YouTube player too. Speaking of Michael Crump, he's got a great blog post on his Azure Tips and Tricks series that offers a look at Azure DevOps projects using Node.js and AKS. So be sure to check out the show notes and description for a link to that. And in some event news, we are just one month away from Dev Intersection in Las Vegas. And this year, Microsoft will be co-hosting slash producing an adjacent Microsoft Azure and AI conference at the same time. So that's awesome, and hopefully you can make it to Vegas to see all the new stuff. Um, and uh, also happening in December, the Ignite Tour kicks off in Berlin, and um, there, it's going to be in dozens of other cities throughout 2019. And links to more information about Dev Intersection and the Ignite Tour are in the show notes and description down below. All right, now it's time for my pick of the week. So Halloween just ended, so I can't really share like scary tech horror stories, but. Trust me, I have heard a lot. But instead, I want to give a shout out to my friend and former coworker, Alex Kranz over at Gizmodo, who produced an incredible 10 minute video looking at the history of the two in one laptop. And Alex spent months on this project, and she even interviewed members of the Surface design team. And um, they even show off some of the original prototypes of the original Surface, all talking about the quest uh, that we all have for the perfect machine. And uh, I love you, Kranz, so be sure to check that out. All right, that does it for me. Let me know what you think of the future of two-in-one laptops or anything else in the comments down below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit the like button on the video and subscribe to their channel, Microsoft Developer, so that you can get all the latest Channel 9 goodness uh, delivered, uh, delivered to your YouTube inbox. See you next week.